Hi, Smitty Halibut here. Um, I have been asked a lot from people recently for me to show off my antenna masts and how I put up my HF antennas at my place. Right now, you can see the antenna here. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about how I built that. I'm having to get creative with shading the sun uh, to get this shot. But that's what it looks like when it's up in the air. Uh, that antenna is a uh, Comet H422, which is a rotatable dipole. It, it covers 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. Um, and, uh, but it's only a dipole, it's not a beam. There's no director or reflector or anything on there, but it's very effective at what it is. Uh, traps for getting multi-bands. Uh, I'm quite fond of it because it's a 40 meter antenna that I can rotate and you know get up in the air and, and uh, get some sort of directivity to. Um, but what I'm here to talk about today is that mast, actually. Um, this is another one of my iPhone selfie style videos, so let's get into it. So for reasons of sunlight, I've come around to the other side of the house. So there's the antenna again. Um, a little bit of breeze, maybe five miles an hour today. Uh, but look at that mast, and I'll go into the details of the construction of it. Notice how it goes through the over th overhang of the house and then comes down all the way into the ground and then is seated in the ground. There, I used a post hole digger down there to dig about two feet in there and then uh, we placed the pipe in and we poured a little bit of concrete in there, a little bit of quick creep. And so that is anchored into the ground only about two feet uh, with some quick creep. But it's enough to hold it in place. And then as you go up to the roof line, you can see that I just drilled a hole through the overhang and then shoved the pipe up through it. On the top side, which I won't be able to show you because I'm not going to get up on the roof today, uh, there is a flange, um, and there's a, a proper roofing term for it, I'm sure, but the kind of thing that you use to be able to put like vents through your roof and still have it not leak. Um, I have one of those uh, up on top of the roof kind of slipped over the pipe and uh, put between the shingles. But even if it does leak, this is the overhang. It's not gonna leak into the house. The worst case is that it's gonna leak and come down that pipe and then just hit the ground, which is not great, but it's not the end of the world. Um, now, what is that pipe? That pipe is a piece of, uh, it's 21 foot long, and it is a piece of one and a half inch galvanized steel pipe. And I don't know if you can tell, but right about there, oh, don't mess with the focus. Uh, right about there, is, okay, trust me on this one, focus is gonna be weird. Right about there is a join between uh, two pieces of pipe. So that, here, I can actually zoom in, there we go. So you'll notice that the one and a half inch pipe kind of ends down there at the bottom and then uh, halfway up where that, uh, where that plate is. And then up out of that plate is a one and a quarter inch piece of steel galvanized pipe. Um, I don't know, can you see it from here? I don't know if you can see it. There it is. There's a bolt sticking through that pipe there. That bolt, so what I did is I drilled a hole through the one and a half inch, the outer pipe, and uh, put a bolt in there. And if, if you were to look up at the top of that piece, there's another bolt in the top of that one. Those two bolts keep these pipes, well, excuse me, the one at the top there keeps it from falling. My pointer doesn't do any good when it's this close. Uh, it keeps it from falling all the way through when it's telescoped down. And that bolt there keeps it up. So that shows you how much pipe is overlapped. Uh, the top pipe, again, where's my pointer finger? There it is. The top pipe is telescoped into the bottom pipe by that amount of pipe. So it's not going to fall over or, um, uh, you know, it's not at risk of falling out or anything. Um, and then it's just resting on top of that bolt. There are no holes drilled uh, at that point of the inner pipe. It is just resting on top of that pipe. That plate there is just a bunch of U-bolts connected to the bottom pipe and the top pipe to keep the pipes from twisting. That is not there to hold anything up. Everything is resting on that bottom bolt down at the bottom there. That plate there, my cat is really grumpy. That plate there is just to keep those two poles from twisting to each other. Now that bundle of rope there you, you see is uh, just a tele, um, messenger rope to go up to a pulley up at the top that I could use to pull up a dipole if I want to. I haven't done anything with that yet. 
But the idea being that I can loosen up those U-bolts, lift up the top pipe just by an inch or so, have somebody pull the bolt out of that, and then the entire thing will telescope down so that the rotator and everything up at the top there comes down and sits right there at the top of the outer pipe. And that makes it about head level. So it makes like the rotator and everything else is about head level, which is about perfect for working on it. I wish it were a little bit lower, but I wanted to have the overlap with that hole down there. Um, that hole is just above the roof line, so I don't want it to be any lower um, for, you know, uh, less overlap. In any case, then, then the one and a quarter inch pipe goes up and when I have it down, you're able to work on it. I was able to, you know, build the antenna, put the rotator on it, put those guy wire attachments on it. Um, that's a, uh, an attachment I got off of eBay. It clamps on. There are no holes drilled for that guy wire attachment. It just clamps on. And then right now I'm using 550 cord, but I do not recommend 550 cord because I found out after tying everything up that 550 cord is specifically designed to stretch and you do not want it to stretch in this context. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of shimmy that entire pipe down to work on the antenna, uh, but you can shimmy it up and bolt everything in place and it holds it up. And then the guy wires are absolutely critical because with that much weight at the top, and that's not even a heavy antenna, but with that much weight at the top, and if there's any wind, that gets all kinds of floppy. Um, and so I've got three guy wires, uh, guy ropes that are holding it in place. And then down at the bottom, I forgot to show this to you before, there's another bolt right there that keeps the inner pipe from falling all the way down. So between that bolt on the outer pipe and then a bolt at the very top of the inner pipe, um, we, we make sure that if you, don't, if you drop it, it does not fall all the way through and you can't get it out again. Assembling this mask was a um, bit of a challenge. Uh, actually, it wasn't too hard. I uh, set up a couple of sawhorses or chairs or something that you can put the pipes on. I drilled the holes in the pipes while it was on the ground, obviously. And then you telescope the pipes together while they're in the ground. So the entire thing uh, is, you know, uh, it sticks out of the top by about three feet, I think, um, once it is all the way in. So there's about three feet of the inner pipe sticking out of the outer pipe, which makes the whole thing about 24 feet long. Uh, and you put the bolts in the right places, and then you make sure that you've got the holes drilled at the top of the outer pipe, which is the where the bolt's going to go through that the top pop pipe, the inner pipe, is going to rest on top of. All the holes are drilled ahead of time. All the bolts, except for the ones that are in when the thing is uh, stretched out, are all in place ahead of time. And so now you've got this 24-foot section of galvanized pipe, and it's kind of doubled up, right? A one and a half on the outside and a one and a quarter on the inside. And that's when I drilled the hole in the roof and I kind of shimmy it up through that hole, lift it up and then put it down in the post hole. And then you put the concrete around there. Um, but it's, you know, assembling it wasn't all that hard. It took a couple of people to kind of make sure that I could get it up through the hole and, and shimmy it in the right places. Erecting the, that antenna. Now that you have it, you have it in place, the concrete is dried, you've got the flange in place at the top. Now you've got it up at, you know, about chest height that you can start working on and putting the antennas on it. All of that can be done with one, maybe two people. When you, when it comes time to shimmy that and that mast up and put it out to full length, um, you really want to have five cat fight. You really want to have five people available for that if you can. Uh, ideally, you would have one person shimmying the, the inner pipe up, another person there ready to put the bolt in the outer pipe for the inner pipe to rest on, uh, and then one person on each of the guy ropes. And in my case, I got three guy ropes, so I had three people out here to help out with that. Because as you're shimmying it up, it's kind of flopping all over the place. You don't have uh, tension in the guy ropes, and it, it's kind of scary. Especially if you've got any sort of wind going on like I do right now. You can see that palm tree is blowing around. I mean, it's, you know, 5 or 10 miles an hour right now. It's not super fast, but faster than I would want to be trying to erect an antenna. Um, so if you've got any sort of adverse conditions like that, make sure you've got people at the ends of those ropes holding on tension. Um, and then if you've got it, ideally at least one or two other people that can free roam and, and look at directions and, and which way things are leaning and say, all right, person one, pull, person two, slack, you know, whatever. Um, and then, uh, when you get it up there and you've got it resting on the bolt, then you can, uh, tighten those guy ropes. 
I just have them going into eye bolts, uh, like literally one on uh, that corner of the house. Um, and then on the fence, I have some steel uh, posts. The fence is made, uh, is made on some steel posts and there's a piece of two by four kind of bolted to that steel post with an eye bolt just above the roof line. One that is connected over there and then over on this side, kind of the same thing. I'll, I'll get closer over to this one. In fact, let's do it now. Um, and uh, it, it doesn't require a lot of strength because it's you're you're not holding up the geez where can I do this uh, you're not holding up the uh, the full strength of the mass you're just having to hold enough tension uh, to you know for when the wind is blowing the thing around right so it's it's a long lever arm but it's it's not a lot of force. So you can, I'm trying to keep it out of the sun too. So you can see the eye, the eye bolt through the two by four. The two by four is just bolted to the steel post that is behind this spot on the fence. Um, and that's been enough. We've had some pretty heavy winds here. Well, heavy for California anyway, around 40 or 50 miles an hour up at that elevation. And um, before I tightened down the guy ropes, it was, uh, it was pretty sketchy. But even with floppy guy ropes, it did not come down. Uh, it was moving all over the place. Steel bends a fair bit, uh, so it looked scary. But once I tightened down those guy ropes, it was pretty solid and steady in one place. If you're in a place that gets heavy winds a lot or has hurricanes or anything like that, I would not do something like this or maybe put another set of guy ropes in the middle of that. Um, but uh, here in California, it, it works just fine. All right, so here's another antenna mast that I built. This is for a different antenna. This is the W6NBC uh, double delta slot HF antenna. Now, this is not a video about the antenna, but it's a ma uh, about how I made the mast. This is a 20 foot section of two by four. Uh, just standard lumber, two by four. Uh, my no local hardware store, I think only had up to 16 feet, but we have a lumber store that was able to go up to 20. And I have three of these, actually, I think I had four, no, there are only three. So there's one in this corner that's got the W6NBC slot on it. I have another one in that corner that doesn't have anything on it right now. And there's another one right there by the house line or by where the, where the house butts up against the fence. I used to have a long wire that would start at that corner of the house, um, go over to this one, up, along here at about 20 feet in the, in the air to the top of that one, make it a 90 degree turn, go over to that one, and then uh, come down just because the wire was long enough to do that. So I used to have a long wire in the air about 20 feet up. Um, for reasons, I took that antenna down and I ended up building this W6NBC um, double delta slot. And, but, it, but the, the post, the two by four are the same. So again, this is, just two by four, and it's been bolted into the steel post that's behind this spot on the fence. It's the exact same mechanism that I used for this part right here, uh, which is the guy rope for the, um, the antenna I just showed you. And again, it's been through some wind and it seemed to handle it just fine. If we got, you know, gale force winds or, or proper hurricanes, it might be a problem, but, um, with the moderate and mild weather we have here in California, it wasn't a problem at all. And the lumber is, you know, not that expensive and not that hard to uh, get home. I got it home on my Prius. Uh, it was quite comical watching a Prius drive with a surfboard carrier on top with, uh, I think I had three or four, I don't, I feel like I had a fourth. Anyway, at least three pieces of 20 foot two by four. I also did the same thing with the piping. Got that home on the roof of my Prius. That was, quite hilarious, but it can be done. Uh, and if you've got a friend with a, with a truck or a long bed, maybe take them up on that, but, uh, but it can be done. And uh, it's very inexpensive compared to sticking up a Roan Tower. Now, it is not going to survive like a Roan Tower, right? Th these are definitely on the cheap antennas, but they're quick and easy to put up for very little money, very little uh, commitment to the house. You know, I could take these down without making too much of a, um, uh, you know, modification to the house with the exception of the hole I drilled in the overhang. Um, you know, that's really kind of the biggest modification I've made to all of this, but that could be patched up. Um, you know, there isn't a giant cubic yard hole in the ground poured with concrete. Um, you know, there aren't guy wires running off into my neighbor's yards or anything like that. So it's, 
I was able to get it past the, um, the, in, uh, the you know, the uh, spousal, spousal inspection committee, which was nice. Um, and they've been super effective. So, yeah, those are my antennas. So I'm going to leave you with uh, one more antenna mounting option. These are my ADS-B antennas. Uh, so I've got an ADS-B receiver on a Raspberry Pi set up in my shed here. This shed is also doubles as my office for work uh, because I'm working at home like everybody else who is able to these days. Um, but these are simple little six inch, uh, they're mast clamps. So they're supposed to be two of them with a piece of mast sticking out of them. Uh, and then you put the antenna on top of that. But for short enough antennas, you just stick them straight into the mast mount. Uh, it works well. I've been doing this for years. I've, these ADS-B are relatively new, but I've got a two meter and a 440 over on this side of the house over here somewhere. You can't see it from here. Uh, but I've been doing it for years and it's been uh, holding holding tight and doing a really good job. Um, that's how I've mounted pretty much all of my antennas at my house. So anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Smitty Halibut. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter, Smitty Halibut there. Um, and uh, let me know if any of this uh, is helpful for you. If you've uh, used, if you decide to use any of these antenna mounting techniques, um, really, I really like hearing other people who are doing things because of they've seen my show. Right? If there's, you know, you watched a video of mine and you said, hey, I can do that, I'd love to hear that. So in any case, catch me on Twitter. Talk to you later. 73, cheers, and be good humans. Thank you so much.